If you guys need blocks, yeah. you can use them. They're behind the curtain. If you're like, I don't do blocks, no problem. You don't need blocks. We don't need no blocks. No, no blocks. That's so I know where my hands go. Hands and feet. Um, I'm going to put that down with the marker so it looks good. Um, oh, okay, so this is whatever you've got. Great. Let me check that. Oh, that's Vivian? You're Vivian. That's Vivian. Oh, you're taking I am. Okay. Yes. By the way, please. Yes. Whatever you need here. Oh, leave my sweater. Okay. Thank you. Pack it in. You can take it off, I don't care. I don't like sweating on my I'm ready for you. What's wrong? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Just say, no problem. Respira profundo. I am. I got a blank space baby, and I'll write your name. That's a Taylor Swift song. I don't know if you caught on to that. Who doesn't love Taylor Swift? Welcome everybody. Namaste. I'm Chris. You can wave to the people out in uh, YouTube land. They're, we're streaming this, but then it'll be recorded. It's simultaneously being recorded, and when we stream it, you'll get some free access to it because you're here doing this with me, and thank you. So we're actually going to start lying on our back. Your feet can stay facing forward. And just reach your arms up and over your head. Take a nice long body stretch from the fingertips to the toes. Point through the toes. You can arch the back. It might feel good. Take a breath in through the nose. Breathe it out your mouth. Take that again. Deep breath in. Give it a sigh. Go ahead and draw your knees up into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Open up the lower back. You can rock around, circling around, massaging out lower back, the glutes. The sacrum itself, if you want to kind of walk from butt cheek to butt cheek. And then go ahead and reach out and grab onto the outer blades of your feet with your hands. If they're not available, you can hold on to your shins. That's cool, but happy baby all the same. Ananda Balasana. And give yourself a gentle but active pull and a gentle but active kick. The pulling helps to open your hips as the knees go slightly wide at the ribs. And the kicking will help you eventually, one, bring your... One day, bring your tailbone a bit closer to the ground. All right. Go ahead and figure four left ankle in front of right thigh. Simple cross-legged supine pigeon. You can interlace your fingers around your right hamstring or your right shin if you want a deeper stretch. Take a moment to pull the left toes towards your left kneecap. So you're engaging through the heel, flexing through the shin and feeling a stretch on the calf, but you'll probably feel it more on the outside of that left knee. See that your shoulders are releasing towards the mat, that the jaw is relaxed. And then slowly release that and switch sides. So crossing right ankle, figure four in front of the left thigh, move your the calf open. So I'm already starting to hear the breath. Make sure you're breathing with your ujjayi sound. If your eyes are gonna close, that's cool. If they're gonna be open, just a single point of focus. Try to get out of the chitter chatter of your head. Awesome. Let's slowly release that. Hook your hands underneath the creases of the knees. Give yourself a slow rock forward and back on the spine, massaging out your spine. And then let's come on to hands and knees. Cross your ankles, plant your palms out in front of you. Setting up for your tabletop, spread your fingers out nice and wide, shoulders over the wrists. Take a breath in, drop the belly, look forward and up. 
and then exhale to round into the back, really pushing the mat away from you like you're trying to touch the back of your heart to the ceiling. Inhale, drop the belly, come back into the cow spine. Slow exhale to round into the back, looking back towards your navel. Let's take that one more time, breathing in. And then exhale to round. Cool, neutralize your tabletop, step back to plank pose. Take a breath in plank and then push your hips high and back, downward facing dog. Walk your dog here, bend from knee to knee, pushing through the opposite heel. Now we're really starting to hear the sound of the breath because it's gonna start to matter more as the practice gets a little bit more technical, maybe challenging, but always coming from the place of ease before your efforts. Coming from a place of doing, taking action, but not overdoing. And if you're from around this neck of the woods, we like to do. Sometimes we do a little too much. So it's a good thing. I don't think that's a problem as long as we're finding that bit of sweetness in our actions. So over the next few breaths, start to settle into your downward facing dog, pressing into the fingerprints, driving through that index pointer knuckle pad, letting the side body get long, the elbows dial down towards the mat. Let's take two more breaths here. Push your heart towards your feet to feel that stretch across the chest. And then soften a little bit. Rise to your tippy toes, look to the front of the mat, bend your knees, pull back. Let's just take a tiptoe walk to the front of the mat. Get your feet to parallel, grab for opposite elbows maybe, ankles if you want or interlace your hands back behind your head. A couple bounces up and down, we call these ballistic stretches. A couple sways side to side, keeping the feet planted firmly into the mat so that as you sway, you feel little pulls on the outer hamstrings, tops of the calves. Take a breath in through the nose, flutter out your lips. And then let your hands hang heavy onto the mat. Take a nice slow roll up to stand. Think of yourself as like a cave person, Neanderthal, belly pulling in, shoulders hanging heavy. Give the shoulders a shrug up into the ears, roll them down the back, and then take that forward as well. All right, Samastitihi, which is simply mountain pose, but it means even stance. So we feel even from left and right, feel even from front to back. On your inhale, let's take the arms up and over your head. Big stretch, reaching up, looking up if you like. Exhale, diving down, forward folding over the legs. See, maybe if you can touch your hands to the mat. And then inhale, halfway lift up, lengthen through. Stepping your right foot back to a low lunge, runner's lunge. So you'll tent your fingers, you'll beam the chest forward, feel the shoulders pull down the back, back of the neck is long. And then from here, just stepping back into downward facing dog. Nice, on an inhale, ripple forward to plank pose, shoulders over the wrist. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. You can use your knees down if you need to. Flip onto the tops of the feet, peel the chest forward, and then roll the shoulders back. And then downward facing dog. Flip the feet one at a time or roll the toes. Inhale, right dog split. Maybe you wanna bend the knee, open the hip. Try to even the shoulders by pushing your heart towards your standing foot. Then on your inhale, re-lengthen through the lifted leg. Look forward and then step your foot forward in between the hands until toes and fingers align. If the foot doesn't get there, you help it there. Again, runner's lunge. Breathe in, bend the knee, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, step your back foot forward. Big toes touch, heels slightly apart, melt down. Take a halfway lift up, lengthen through. And then exhale, melt it down again. Inhale, arms way up. Create a beautiful stretch here, shine the heart. Exhale, hands down, eventually by your side, samastitihi. Second side, inhale, arms up, breathe tall. Exhale, dive it down, forward fold. Full surrender all the way down, all the air out. Halfway lift up. Plant the hands, only left foot stepping back to runner's lunge. Draw the chest forward, pull the shoulders back, expand across the collarbones and then step all the way back on your exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale, breathe forward to plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga push up, knees for support if you need them. Roll the toes or flip the feet one at a time, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
With your breath in, left leg floats, bend that knee, open the hip, push your heart towards your standing foot. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And then re-extend through the lifted leg, look forward and then pull the knee into the chest, step the toes in line with the fingertips by hook or crook at that foot there. Breathe into the heart. Exhale, step your back foot forward, fold at the front of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, sweep the arms up, big reverse swan dive. Bring your hands down by your sides. All right, we're gonna take a little bit of that out. Surya Namaskar A, inhale, arms up. Exhale, diving down, forward fold. Sounds beautiful. Inhale, halfway lift. This time, step or hop back. We're going plank to chaturanga or chaturanga directly. Yogi's choice. Flip onto the tops of the feet, peel the heart wide open, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's chill here, five breaths. So come back to all those same qualities of course of an easy breath. Inhale to exhale, approximately matching in length. Feeling that the beginning, middle, and end of your inhale is smooth from start to finish. And the beginning, middle, and end of the exhale is smooth start to finish. So avoid the need, or the we don't need to, but the temptation to pump your breath at any time. It's really about allowing the breath to fill you up by changing the air pressure of the diaphragm and then allowing the breath to release, but no force whatsoever. Okay, so with your next breath in, you can rise to tippy toes, look forward to the front of the mat, bend the knees, pull back, step or hop to parallel feet there. When you land, lift it up halfway. And then exhale, melt it down. Inhale, reverse swan dive, arms up and over your head. Exhale, hands down, eventually by your side. Samasthiti hi. Two more, breathe in, reach up, create this gorgeous stretch. Fold the stretch in half, keeping the heart wide open as you breathe out, breathe out, breathe out, breathe out. Halfway lift on the inhale. Your choice, step to plank or hop to chaturanga. Take your time especially on this upward facing dog to really lengthen out the inhale. Downward facing dog, five breaths. So drop out of the head into the heart. Try to put away your romance, finance, and circumstance. This is your magical cave where you're just putting away life for at least this hour so that you can focus on the miracle that is you. And that's enough, just for this moment, let that be enough. More of a choice than anything else. Two more breaths, we inhale two. Exhale it out. Inhale one. Exhale it out. With your next breath in, tippy toes, look forward. Bend the knees, pull back. When there's no breath left, step, hop, or float. Half lift on landing. Exhale, release. Inhale, arms to the sky, reaching way up. Hands to the heart. One more round, please. Arms up. Exhale, dive it down. Inhale, prepare your way, making your way to downward facing dog. Take all the stops, or take the express route if you need to. When you get into that downward facing dog, let's just count off the breath. Inhale, five. Exhale, inhale four, breathing out, three, every breath is committing to length, two, and one, next breath in, prepare, look forward, bend the knees, pull back, bottom of the breath, there's no breath as you move. Halfway lengthen up. Exhale, release it down. Inhale, arms up, reach high, gather that energy, press it between your hands, draw it down to your beautiful heart center. All right, moving on. Bend the knees, sweep the arms up. Utkatasana, fierce pose. On this first one, we're just gonna linger a little longer to get the weight into the heels, to get your upper body lifted upright as possible and see if you can pull the arms back by your ears, breathing in. Exhale, belly to thighs, hands to mat, face to shins, legs are long. Halfway lift up, prepare. Good. You can take a vinyasa if you need to skip. Meet us in downward facing dog.
Adho Mukha Svanasana. All right, let's lift the left leg to the sky. It might be backwards from what you're used to. Draw the knee into the chest, step that foot inside the left thumb. Anchor the back heel down to 45 degrees. Heels are about hips width apart, so not a tight rope, a miniature train track. Inhale the arms up, reaching up. Maybe you press the palms or leave the hands apart. Just depends what the shoulders can do today. If you push your palms together, it's a little tricky to keep the shoulders open, but that's gonna really tune into some strength that we may be lacking in the shoulder girdle. Take a breath in with your exhale, hands to the mat. Again, down dog directly or take the vinyasa. Take your time, no rush. Try to smooth the transitions with the smoothness of your breath. On your inhale, right dog split, taking the second leg. Draw the knee into the chest, step that foot inside of the right thumb. When the back heel lowers down again, find that miniature train track and then take the arms up. Palms together or arms apart, yogi's choice. Pull the ribs in, breathe in. And then when you're ready to, on the exhale, hands to the mat, down dog directly, or take the vinyasa. Just letting the breath be the guiding force like winds in your sails. On your next breath in, rise to tippy toes, look forward. Bend the knees, pull back, bottom of the exhale, take some hang time, halfway lift. Release, breathe out the mouth. <sighs> Bend the knees, sweep the arms up, Utkatasana. Exhale, come to stand, hands by your sides. Let's take a pause breath, just to slow things down a bit. And then we're going in again. Bend the knees, arms up, Utkatasana. Exhale, belly to thighs, face to shins, hands to mat. Halfway lift up, lengthen through. Chaturanga directly or downward facing dog. Building lots of heat right now. Downward facing dog. With your next breath in, wait for it. Left dog split. Draw the knee into the chest. Step that foot inside of the thumb. Bring your back heel down. Arms go up, Vira one. Square the hips, deepen into the front thigh. Breathe in. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back. Take your vinyasa or downward facing dog direct. With your next inhale, right dog split, wait for the breath. Then draw the knee forward, step the foot inside of the thumb, anchor the back heel, take the arms up. Deep it in, breathe, hands down, step back. Take your vinyasa. Down dog just for a breath. Connect, get out of the head space, dive deep into the sound of your ujjayi. And then let's get ready, prepare, look forward. Bend the knees, pull back, bottom of the breath. Take that halfway lift. Exhale, release. Knees bend as the arms go up, utkatasana. Exhale, hands down by your sides eventually. Again, we're gonna pause for a breath, but stay present. We're not checking out, we're checking in. Next, inhale, bend the knees, arms up. Exhale, dive it down, forward, forward. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, meet me in downward facing dog. All right, this is the final lap on our opening sequences. Left dog split. Exhale, step the foot forward. Anchor the back heel, arms up. Try to smooth out the transitions. Hands back down. Dog directly or take the flow. On your in-breath, right dog split. Knee forward, squeeze it in, step it forward. Back heel down, arms up. Good, on the exhale, hands to the mat. Step it back, take the vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Catch your breath, slow things down. All right, next breath in. Rise to tippy toes, look forward. Bend the knees, pull back. Launch it, step it. Half lift, lengthen it. Exhale, release it. Bend the knees, arms up. 
hands to the heart, stand hands by your sides, pause. Nice job, everybody. Please step your feet as wide as the mat. Turn the heels in, toes out. Take a squat down if you need to slide a block underneath your bum, totally fine. So the elbows are pushing out into the inner thighs. Inner thighs are hugging back to the elbows. We're trying to get a nice reciprocal relationship of push and pull to in turn dial the toe, knees in the same direction as the toes. Imagine that mama cat's got you by the back of the neck and she's pulling to lift your spine up out of your hips. See if you can stick your booty back a little bit as you draw your chest forward a little bit, breathing into the expansion of the chest. Now this is somewhat more restful than where we were a moment ago, but we're gonna take it into a more restful place of child's pose before you go. Decide if you wanna take a journey through crow pose. If you're not for crow pose, meet us in downward facing dog. Crow pose works like this, hands underneath the shoulders. Bring your feet close together so that your heels can touch. Walk your hands back so the knees touch the backs of the upper arm and then start to rock the weight into the fingertips. Now if you bend the elbows a little bit, shelves are created with the triceps and you can lift one of your feet towards your butt. Rock it back, switch sides. Some of us might try to lift both heels up towards your seat. Play, that's all this is. And we're gonna take a couple breaths of stay and play. Three. Two, fallen is part of life. You just gotta get up one more time. Meet in your downward facing dog. You can hop or step back. Take that vinyasa or skip it. And now let's rest for realsies. You can either take child's pose with your knees wide, big toes touch, hips back on the heels, or if you prefer to sit upright in Vajrasana. That's often what I like to do. From here, I'm just gonna place my hands on my thighs with my palms facing up. Gonna feel that same lengthening through the back of my neck that I did in my Malasana a moment ago. And because we're not active at the moment, just really dive into that smooth sound of the breath. Let's take three breaths of stillness. And if your eyes are closed, allow them to open. Come on the hands and knees. Step your feet back into plank pose. Take a breath in plank pose. From there, let's just push back into downward facing dog. Nice long side body stretch here. We've got a lot more space to work with because we've created all this beautiful heat in the body. On your next breath in, let's float the left leg up. Exhale to step that foot forward in between your hands. Keep the back heel lifted this time. This is low lunge, back knee stays lifted because we're gonna just turn that into high lunge. Taking a moment to de dive deep into the front thigh. Look at your front thigh maybe. Try to bring it as parallel to the mat as you can. Take a breath in, no rush here. We're gonna open up to warrior two, folding the back heel down. I'm gonna toe heel my left foot a little bit to the right. So my front heel is bisecting my back arch. Reach through the fingertips, stay. Just deepen into the front thigh, soften in the shoulders. On your in-breath, flip the front palm, reach forward, tip back, reverse warrior. This is a side body stretch. Take another breath in, commit to the bend in the front knee. And then with your exhale, either take the elbow to the thigh, or if you prefer to take your hand on the inside of the foot, you can. Right arm's gonna reach directly across the room to your buddy practicing across from you. Find that length from the blade of your back foot through your top fingertips. Really lengthen through the elbow, but try to pull the arm into the shoulder socket. Take some of the weight out of the elbow or the hand so you start to bring more heat into your inner left thigh. And if you're struggling, smile, because that means you're in the right room. Take a breath. Slowly start to straighten the front leg. You might put your hand on the shin for triangle pose or keep your fingertips on the ground. Let's look up towards our top thumbnail. Keeping the belly pulled in, keep your tailbone tucked underneath you. You're basically just trying to flatten your body out to the sides of your mat, so the sides of your mat and your body are in the same parallel plane. With your next breath in, let's warrior two. Bend the front knee, deepen in, good. From there, straighten through the front leg. Turn the toes to the side wall. Take your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. 
little bend to the knees as you pull your knuckles down. Seeing if you can glue the heels of your palms together. Look up and just beam your heart up towards the ceiling above you. Send the breath into that beam. And then with your exhale, hinge at the hips. Keep the heart open for the journey. Pause and half lift. And then take it all the way down. Forward fold. Again, try to glue the heels of the palms together. If they don't stay, no problem. But that is the intention. Because we're looking to find the openness in the shoulders as we find strength in the wrists. And the only way to really find that strength in the wrists is to glue the heels of the palms together. But enough about that, take a breath. Release your hands to the mat. We're gonna pause in wide forward fold. You can just give yourself a bend from knee to knee. When you're ready to, you're just gonna chill here, bringing the weight evenly into the tripods of the feet. Notice if you're collapsing into the outer blades of the feet. Some of us, not everybody for sure, are going to dig the top of your head to the ground. You're going to very carefully place the hands where you can see them, forming a box with the elbows, box in the shoulders. And if you push into your hands in the top of your head, your feet start to get light. If you're feeling like you'd like to explore Shirshasana number two, feel free. Find an easy breath wherever you're at is perfect and wherever you're at, you're really the most important thing your breath is doing is lengthening through your spine. Let's go for two. Hear the sound, one. When you're ready to, if you're up, straddle out your legs, drive into the hands, the top of your head, let your feet place down nice and quietly. Everybody take your hands underneath your shoulders, lengthen up, halfway lift. And then with your exhale, crawl your way to the front of your mat. Low lunge, but again, keep the back knee lifted. High lunge, we're here again. This time, rather than the open hip, we're gonna take the hands to the heart. Breathe in, I'm using my left hand to drive my right elbow across, but basically I'm gonna return my hands to prayer at heart center, and that's the key of this pose, that every time you twist out, you're trying to draw your heart towards your thumbs. You look over your left shoulder. If you need to drop the back knee, just take a moment, do that now. It's okay. Allow yourself that. Let's go for three. Slow down your breath, listen to mine. Two. And one. Look down, very calmly take your hands to the mat. Step your back foot about 12 inches forward and anchor the heel at 45 degrees. Take a halfway lengthen up, lift, tent the fingers maybe. And then bow your head towards the front knee, which is now trying to straighten. It may not go completely straight. That is not the point of this pose. The point of this pose is to feel a stretch on the back of the leg. And as long as you're feeling that, you're good. If you want more, yes, of course, straighten through the knee. But don't lock the knee out. With your inhale, just try to touch the top of your head towards the big toe of the front foot. With your exhale, try to bow your head in towards the knee. We'll take two more breaths here in our Parsvottanasana, which means pyramid pose. Smooth out the breath. One of the reasons why I can talk so much while I practice is because I've learned how to use the breath efficiently. It means it is possible. All right, bend the front knee. The back foot is gonna re-step back with the heel up. Let's step both of our feet back, big toes to touch. I'm gonna pour the weight into my right hand to come into side plank. I'm gonna modify, single point of focus. Gotta unleash your beast. One more time, nice job, Frank. All right, top hand down, plank pose to dog or take a vinyasa if you're feeling it. Meet me in downward facing dog. Smile when you look up maybe. Or just look like a curmudgeon and see if that works for you. Take a breath. All right, let's take a resting pose, please. Well done, yogis. Can be child's pose, can be Vajrasana. I encourage you to come into stillness right away. Notice if there's any drama going on in your breath. Can you take it out of the equation? A lot of this stuff is just choices that we're not used to making. All right, love it, love it, love it. Here we go in. Hands and knees, please. Step back to plank pose. Plank pose is the official measuring tape for your downward facing dog, and that's where we're going. 
Downward facing dog. Now the cool thing is, is we're finish up on the right leg. So for us right-handed people, it's gonna be the easier leg. And for us left-handed people, I apologize. Right leg to the sky, lift it. Draw the knee forward, step the foot, toes line up with fingertips. Commit to the bend in the front knee and that doesn't change as you take your arms up into high lunge. The deeper you are, the easier the balance. Breathe in, slowly fold the back heel, open the arms, toe heel the front foot. So we got that bisection of the back arch. Soften the shoulders. Flip and tip, inhale to exhale, reverse warrior, big side body stretch. Commit to the bend in the front knee and then take that elbow to the thigh or if you took the hand to the ground. Do that, left fingertips lengthening up over your head. That's your sword up above you cutting through your adversity. So really, really extending through the fingertips. Make sure you're not collapsing in the back knee. Put a lift, little lift into the inner back thigh to avoid that collapse. Take a breath. Exhale, triangle pose. Front leg straightens. Again, hand on the shin if you want. If you left your hand on the mat, do that. I'm using a little bit of energy of pushing my bottom arm into my front leg. And that's helping me do what feels like a twist, even though this is not a twisting pose. Feels like one in order to keep everything stacked. So just listen, I'm trying to take my right shoulder to the wall in front of me as I take my left shoulder to the wall behind me. That's where the twist feels like. All right, on your next breath in, no rush, warrior two. Just re-bend in that front knee. Then straighten through the front leg, feels nice. Turn the toes to the side wall. Opposite clasp of the fingers behind you, if you can recall. If not, no worries, just clasp your fingers. Pull down, puff out the chest, open the heart, breathe in. And then exhale, dive, feels so good. Rock a little bit of the weight out of the heels and into the toes, that doesn't mean lift your heels off of the ground. It just means it'll get a better stretch right behind the knees. Tight hamstrings are always a combination of tight calves and tight hamstrings. And if we rock the weight out into the toes, you'll unlock that lower part of the leg. Take a breath. Nice, release the hands down, pause here. This is our wide forward fold one more time. Feel free to sway a couple times, bend from knee to knee if you wanna find something more still. Perhaps you'd consider reaching out and grabbing hold of your ankles or your big toes if they're available to you and then pull the chest towards the mat, let the head just dangle off the spine. Of course, if you'd like another round of our Shirshasana in any variation that you might take, do something that is safe, do something that is sustainable, and we'll breathe here. Let's go for four. Wherever you're at, pull the belly in on the inhale. With the exhale, lengthen. Three. Two. Love the variations, nice job on the twist. Yeah, for sure. All right, flyers, dismount, take your time, take your time. Heels to the mats, finish up whatever it is you are doing. Eventually we're all gonna meet in that halfway length and up. Crawl your way to the front of the mat into low lunge. Let me say it early that we're about to come into the twist, so if you need to lower your back knee, you might do that now, it's a little more accessible. And then arms up high, lunge. Press magic between your hands, draw your power to your heart center, breathe in. I'm gonna use this right arm to really send that left elbow across, and then my hands come into Anjali Mudra, prayer for short. Start to draw your heart towards your thumbs. Get light on the front leg. It's too tempting to kind of collapse all your weight there, but if you do, it's just a matter of time before you fall like a house of cards. Look over your right shoulder to the wall behind you, see if that's possible. Get lots of energy in that back heel, rooting back as the front chin presses forward. I'm counting you off three. Exhale it out. Two. Breathe me now. Last one. Beautiful friends, look down. No drama, hands to the mat. Wow, step that back foot only 12 inches forward, anchor the heel at 45 degrees. Length and lift, tent the fingers, beam the heart forward, look slightly forward, about three feet in front of the toes. And then exhale, melt it down. Find your pulse here. So again, as you breathe in, you're trying to bring the top of your head to touch the big toe. With your exhale, you're trying to tap your forehead towards the knee or shin. Couple more breaths here. So we're in the one pose which gets our leg all fiery and we're like, no, I don't like that. And then we're in a pose that gets our front leg all stretchy and when 
or thinking, no, I don't like that either. So just try to find that dividing line where every challenge that we face is a fun, peaceful journey of choice. Okay, front knee bends, back foot steps back, both feet step back, big toes touch. Option to lower the left knee down if you need to. If not, pour the weight into the left hand, roll to the pinky edge of your left foot. Reach the right hand up, see about looking up, see about trying to touch your right hip towards the ceiling. Breathe three. Smile if you're struggling. Welcome to life, two. Last one. Calmly plank pose, down dog directly, or if you care to, take a vinyasa. Upward facing, downward facing dog. Good choices, nice modifications, everybody. Downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, could we all just take a stroll to the front of the mat? Step your feet at least hips width apart, maybe a little wider. Again, think like a Neanderthal as you're hanging heavy here. Chin to the chest, maybe. Maybe the knees are very bent. Slow your breath down. Let's take breath in through the nose. Stick out your tongue. <sighs> Unleash your badass, people. Take a breath in. Stick out the tongue. <sighs> Good. Good way to chase away negativity. Feels a little ridiculous, and then you do it. And you're like, well, I'll be damned. There's something in there. Okay. Let's come to stand, please. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Roll up, or however you want to come up is perfect. Okay, so we're gonna draw the weight into the right leg. That means my right foot stays down. Left shin's gonna bend, so the knee's gonna bend. I'm gonna hold on to the shin. Yeah. So when we're balancing on camera, your balance is like 50% worse. Open that knee off to the sidewall. Place the foot somewhere on the leg. Maybe it's above or below, just not on the knee. Then you can take your hands to your heart. Good, soft gaze, eyes are halfway closed, just so you can find that ease in every bit of balance that you are finding. Grow your branches to the sky. And then see about maybe looking up. Find a very specific point on the ceiling and it will help your balance. Slowly take your hands to your heart. Draw the knee forward. Good. Take your right hand, grab onto the outside of the left thigh. Reach your left hand back. Reach for the wall behind you. Nice. Maybe you look to the side wall. Maybe you look back. Three. Squeeze from the belly. Firm through the thigh. One. Feet together, hands by your sides. Put away all judgment. Just stand in the fire that is brewing about your right leg. This is it. Balance is a moving target. The moment you find it, it has moved. You gotta learn to move with it. Okay, other side. Weight goes into the left leg. Right knee bends. Take it up. Maybe you wanna grab hold of it. Give it a squeeze. If it's too far away, you can just hold on to the hamstring. Draw that knee open. Place the foot somewhere above or below the knee. Hands to heart center for Vrkshasana tree pose. Get really tall here. The taller you get, the easier the balance is going to be. We can grow our branches. We can look up. Single point of focus. Don't let the eyes wander, because then you wander. Nice, hands to the heart. Beautiful, we're in a dance. Draw that knee forward. Left hand to the outside of the right leg. Right hand reaches back. Maybe you look sideways, pull the belly in, feel the squeeze of the inner thighs. Maybe you look back. Three, two, and one. Feet together, hands by your sides, own the fire. That's yours. All right, I believe the hard stuff is over. Take your arms up and over your head. Exhale, release, let it go. Halfway length and lift, how you want to manifest your downward facing dog. Me, I'm just going to step back to downward facing dog. Little pedal through, little sway if you want one or find your stillness. All right, left dog split, please, left leg up. Let's draw that shin figure four style at the front of the mat. Coming into pigeon pose, if pigeon is not for you, we did it on our back earlier. You can, of course, take that. If you want to slide a block underneath your left booty cheek, do so. 
So I'm gonna slide my back foot way back to open up my front shin more. And before I go down for the count, I'm gonna walk my hands back by my hips. I'm gonna roll the shoulders back and beam my chest up. Taking a breath in. With your exhale, let's go down for the count. If you wanna prop yourself up on your elbows, maybe a block for the forehead. If you wanna stack your palms with the back of your hands, creating a pillow for the forehead, that's cool. And if you have the space to take your arms all the way out in front of you, then please do. So this is a hip opener, which can be very intense. We want to be sort of judicious with the intensity. If it's too much, then back away a little bit. If you're wondering why am I still here, then you try to let the body get heavier on that front leg. Keep the back thigh spinning down, the front of the leg spinning towards the ground. In other words, we'll have a tendency to roll the knee off to the side and we want to do our best not to let that happen. Check in with your forehead. Notice if you got any stank on the face. Check in with your shoulders. Notice if they're starting to look like an accessory for your ears. Check in with the jaw, and not just the jaw itself, but the tongue that resides within the mouth. Keep it relaxed, which for some people means between the lower teeth, other people will gently rest the tip of their tongue on the soft palate right behind the hard ridge behind the teeth. Let's go for three breaths here. Two, really exhaling into that surrender. And three, take your time to slowly walk your hands back underneath your shoulders, peeling yourself away. Let's try to curl the back toes, lift the back knee, and rather than drag the left leg back, pull it up and send it back. Just do your best. Maybe you just want to bend the knee and open the hip. I'm going to flip my dog in a rock star, dropping the tippy toe just to the outside of the mat, reaching my top hand up, feeling that side body stretch. This is a little bit like a side plank with a heart and the hip opener. Take a breath in, exhale, flip your dog. If you're in rock star, just come into down dog, both feet to the mat. You can pedal out your dog or take a vinyasa with me. Come forward to plank. Really trying to take your time, especially when you're tired that you iron out all the rough spots. Meeting back in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Let's take right dog split. Draw the shin to the front of the mat. When the leg lands, we leave it alone. However, by sliding the back foot back er, you might open up that front hip a little bit more. Untuck the toes, commit to, tenting the fingers, commit to, showing off your beautiful heart to the universe above you. So glad you came. And then exhale, melt it down. Your depth, your fold, your pose. It is less about getting you into a pose and more about getting you into you. That's the purpose of all of these shapes that we make. It's to build things like compassion and tolerance for ourselves, to build empowerment, to build the superhero beneath the skin that you may have forgot dwells beneath. Time for maybe healing. So every time you breathe out, if any of those words speak to you, you can just, in the silence of your own thoughts, breathe into that word. Let's go five breaths, five. Long exhale always. Four. Three. I'm just setting the guidelines. You're breathing your own breath, of course. Two. And one. Really just start to peel yourself away from the mats. Like you're just waking up. Curl the back toes. Lift the back knee. Try to... Lift the right leg up before you sweep it into the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. If you want the rock star, take it. Maybe just shake out the leg if it's not for you. 
We are meeting in down dog. You can dwell here for a little bit, or if you want to come in early, do so. Breathe in. And then we can all meet in downward facing dog. This is the last downward facing dog of our practice. Make it count. If you want to put an exclamation point at the end of this sentence, take a vinyasa with me. If you'd rather create an ellipse or a comma, then just chill in down dog, because that's perfect too. All right, so from there, hands and knees. Never thought this moment would come. Rock back or sweep your legs out in front of you. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. Let the knees open wide. Pull the heels in towards the groin. Sit up tall. Expand across the clavicle, the collarbones. Interlace your hands underneath the pinky toes. Breathe in. Imagine like you're leaning over a cliff. So when you lean over a cliff, if you've never done so, I will tell you, you lean forward, but you also root back because you don't want to fall, but you want to see what's at the bottom. And those two actions of leaning forward and rooting back are going to help you deepen into the forward fold. Now, some of us will have a preference to take the hands out in front of you. If you're one of those people, feel free to do so. It does make your upper body heavier the more you can extend your hands out. And then the hands also can be used for traction to create a deeper forward fold. Does not matter how deep your forward fold is in comparison to another person. It matters that you're doing your best. So I find this pose for a lot of people starts to brew up judgment. I've been doing yoga for a while. Why am I not more open in the hips? Doesn't matter. You're here today doing the stretch. You're moving towards your goal. And it's that simple. Let's go three breaths here. Inhale. Inhale. Last one. Take your time to walk your hands back if they're out in front. Take your time to come up to sit. All right, pay attention because we're all facing a different way. I'm going to bend my left knee up towards the sky. I'm going to step the foot across and then bring my right leg across. Simple seated twist. Maybe that's an easier way to say this. This foot stays rooted on the ground pinky or big toe side of the foot. And my left butt cheek's going to want to pop off the ground, but I do not want it to. So let's take the left hand behind the back and plant the heel of the palm. Take your right arm up and over your head, maybe look up, and then twist over towards the front leg. When you found that your belly has given you all the twist it can, feel free to either wrap the elbow around that left shin or take the elbow to the outside of a shin for a deeper stretch. Now look over your left shoulder. Pull that shoulder down away from your ear. Again, root into specifically the left butt cheeks, the one that's going to want to come off the ground, but we don't want it to come off the ground. And then use your exhale to deepen into that twist. I think three breaths will do. Inhale, tall. Exhale, Uddiyana Bandha, Samana Vayu, belly pulls to the spine. Two more. Let it feel good, especially in the lower back and around that left butt cheek where your piriformis muscle hangs out. Last breath out. All right, release that counter twist over to the other side. Tap your forehead to the mat. All right, for me, I'm gonna come up to sit. I'm gonna put my hands behind me. I'm gonna do sexy legs and switch to the other side. You can go however you wanna go. That's totally cool. Right hand behind you, tent, or uh, driving that heel of the palm into the mat, left hand up, breathe tall. Start to twist from the belly and then decide how you're going to wrap that elbow to the outside. Breathe in tall. Mind that as you're looking over your back shoulder, you're not twisting from the neck. The neck is already good at twisting and the neck is going to try to take over for the rest of your spine. You want to twist right between belly button and chest. That's where we find that healthy rotation of the thoracic spine. So we'll go for three. And two. And one. Release your twist. Counter over to the other side. Good. As you come up, simply about face yourself. So you're facing away from each other because we'll all lay down with our heads towards each other. So feet that way, heads towards me. And then make sure you've got runway behind you to lay down on your back, unless you're already down on your back. When you get onto your back, we can squeeze the knees in briefly. 
Yes, huh? And then feet to the mat, please. Keep the knees bent, heels hips width apart. Simple bridge pose, Setu Bandhasana. Lift your hips up off the ground. Keep rooted into the big toe mounds. Take the hands underneath you, interlace your fingers, walk your elbows and shoulders a bit closer towards one another. Nice. Now as the hips lift, they also lengthen by driving your shins towards the feet, towards the toes, while you drive your heart towards the chin. Let's breathe four more breaths here. That gentle squeeze of the inner thighs will keep you out of the lower back, out of the sacrum. Two. One. Get your hands out of the way. Lower your tailbone to the ground. Take a happy baby. We've been there before. Notice if anything's changed. Maybe you're like, I don't know, I'm just sweatier. That's okay too. All right, let's talk about options. Option number one, bottoms of the feet together, pinky edges of the feet on the mat. You'll be in Supta Baddha Konasana. That's a different variation of a pose we were already in. Option two, candlestick pose. You'll just make the letter L with your legs at the hips. So your legs are kicking heels to the sky, hands can lower by your sides. I might suggest that you put your hands underneath your booty cheeks and that'll create a nice support system for the legs. You won't have to lift so much. If you're interested in shoulder stands, breathe in, tent the fingers by your hips, use an exhale to take the hips over the heart and move the hands to the lower back. I like to tap my knees onto my forehead at least so that I can get a good support system of my hands to the lower back. From there, one leg at a time or both legs together, if you have the core, to your Salamba Saravangasana. Find that easeful place. There's a lot of effort in this pose. We're trying to get the forward fold into the throat so we can get the forward fold out of the hips. I push my hips over my forehead. I push my heels to the back of my mat. We'll go four breaths. Slow it down, hear the breath. You've got a power. It is the sound of your breath. Two. Last one. Feel free to bend the knees, tap them back onto your forehead. If you have plow pose, you can take your toes all the way up and over your head. Use your hands on your body or on the mat to slowly roll yourself all the way down. Slower, more better. Don't let your legs thump. Good. Last thing before we KO, fish pose. Propping yourself up on your elbows. You can always slide a block behind the back of your heart if you want. And then lifting through the chest, dropping the head back. We want the head to touch. So you'll shift the weight until the top or the back of your head can touch the ground. Then you tuck the head towards your tailbone, tailbone towards your head. Yeah, slide that block back there. And then breathe. Close the eyes. Send all your energy into the radiance at Anahata, heart chakra, a place of unconditional love. Excellent. When you're ready, you can push into the elbows, tuck the chin to the chest, lower yourself onto your back. Feet can go as wide as the mat if you'd like. Hands by your hips, palms facing up. Maybe you put a gentle pressure into the elbows to lift the back of the heart off the mat. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and then re-releasing with your heart wide open in this Shavasana corpse pose. Allow again your forehead, your jaw to relax. Allow the eyes to drop deeply into their sockets. Find a place in the mouth where your tongue can just re release. Release your breath, let the breath breathe you. Take in the soundtrack of life that is happening all around us. We can be in one of the craziest, coolest cities in the world and still find this place of peace because you have created this space.
Wiggle the fingers and toes. Rotate the ankles and wrists. You got two ways on that. Give the head a gentle rock side to side. Reach your arms long up over your head like we began. Stretch from fingertips to toes. Arch the back, firm the belly. And then draw your knees in. Give yourself a squish. Roll over to the side of your choosing. We go right to go lunar, left to go solar. And then push your way up to a nice tall seat. Facing forward, you can close the eyes when you get there. If you need to sit up on a block, feel free. Bring your palms to press at heart center, bowing your head to the wisdom of your heart, taking a moment of humility to listen and hope that we stay listening for the rest of the day. All the choices we make always coming from this place. Feel free to join me in a closing om or just listen. Take a breath in. Oh. Thumbs to the forehead, we recognize and bow to the divine within all of us. Namaste. 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 Nice job, everybody. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you so much. Nice job. Boom, boom. See you all soon. Hopefully next week even. We'll be doing this pretty regularly. So thank you everybody at home and talk to you. See you soon. Namaste. Of course, my pleasure.